Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a video talking to you about this 20 inch barrel that I have here in this upper. Um, this is a 20 inch Faxon Firearms Match Series barrel. This is one of the fluted versions from them. Now this is a video that I've been waiting to do for a little bit because um, I ran into some issues during the testing of this, which I'll get into later. Um, so I wanted to make sure I had a really good grasp of what this specific barrel is doing before bringing you this video. Um, I also wanted to test it suppressed, which is why you see this Griffin Optimus Micro up here on the front. Um, been doing a ton of shooting with this on here today, and you're gonna be seeing the results of that as well as with just a regular muzzle device later on. If you guys have been following the channel for any length of time, you probably know that I'm a really big fan of Faxon Firearms. I've shot their barrels a ton, and I've had really, really good experiences. So when I heard that Faxon Firearms was making a dedicated match series line, I was pretty excited because I'd had exceptional accuracy results with the other barrels I tested. So if they're gonna have a match series line, I can only imagine that that's gonna be better. Um, but again, um, I, I had a, some mixed experiences, as I, as I mentioned, um, which, you know what, I might as well just get into it now because uh, I, I hate being teased in videos, so I'm going to avoid teasing you guys in this video. So, um, again, when I saw that there, there were match series barrels, I got in touch with Fax and Firearms, and I said, hey, I really want to test one of those out. So they sent one out to me, and just, I guess, FYI, I did not pay for this barrel. Um, it was provided at no cost from Fax and Firearms for me to uh, test and review for the channel. Um, when they sent it out to me, I started shooting with it, and I was getting okay results. Definitely by no means bad results, but, I mean, I, I was getting consistently inch and a half to two inch groups with a bunch of different types of ammo. Um, and, well, the, again, that's not bad, that's also not really quite what I expected for a barrel in this price range. Um, so I, I, I wanted to rule out human error. So um, I tied it down to a lead sled. I had other people shoot it. Um, I tried as many different types of ammo as I could. And I, was, uh, I even got to the point where I um, broke the torque on the barrel nut, reseated everything to make sure that that was all fine. I changed muzzle devices. And I was still getting, uh, well, not bad groups, some what I would consider sub expectation groups. I'll put it that way. So um, during this process, I was keeping facts and firearms up to date, letting them know that I was having these issues, and um, they took it seriously the entire time. And finally, I said, "Hey, I've I've eliminated as many variables as I can. I'm still having these issues." So um, they had me send it back, and they replaced the barrel. So now I've been testing out this barrel, and it has been a very very good barrel as you'll see um, I've been getting some results that I've been very happy with especially with ammo that is just your regular I guess entry level ammo not even match grade ammo but uh, we'll talk about that here in a second um, it's been in this Midwest Industries upper receiver I got this 18 inch Midwest Industries handguard on it which I just did a review on so check that out and I've been shooting it predominantly with this Vortex Diamondback scope which I also have a review on so check that out um, and then today was my first day being able to shoot this barrel suppressed. The, the previous barrel I'd shot suppressed a little bit, um, but this was the first time I'd been able to shoot this barrel suppressed. Wanted to see how it did before giving you the results, and uh, it, it certainly did not disappoint. Before I get into the accuracy, um, I, I want to run down some of the specs. Honestly, instead of just listing a bunch, like naming off a bunch of stuff, I'm going to list a bunch of stuff here on the side of the screen. Feel free to pause it if you feel so inclined, but honestly, if you go to Facts and Firearms um, product page for this thing, you will see all that information for yourself, um, as well as the other barrels they have available in the Match Series line, which I'll probably touch on a little bit later. So let me go ahead and get into the accuracy that I got with this barrel. So I got a bunch of targets here. Some of these were from uh, a little bit ago. Some of it was from previous days and previous range outings um, with a, a pretty wide variety of ammo. Um, but I'm going to try to just show you the highlights so I'm not boring you guys to death looking at a bunch of different groups. Um, so this one, I uh, was shooting at 100 yards off a bench, and this right here is my own hand reloads. Now, my reloads are not done for accuracy. They're simply so I have ammo to plink with, so I'm not trying to get tight groups out of it. This was just a zeroing group, so just to explain what that is. But even then, with my pretty shoddily made hand loads. We're still looking at about two inches here. Um, but then here we have the, uh, I believe it's Federal Fusion 62 grain ammo. Um, and you'll notice that this thing really likes those mid weight bullets in that like 62 grain area. 
you'll you'll see. But I wanted to test out some, um, I guess, hunting loads for this barrel because I can see a barrel like this being really popular with like varmint hunters. So I wanted to test out some of those, you know, hunting made bullets. So hence why I was trying that uh, fusion. Um, I got results that I was pretty happy with. This is definitely, if not under an inch, it's right at an inch, um, which for shooting off a bench, I was very happy with. And just FYI, predominantly I was shooting with this bipod. I did do some shooting off a bench where I just had a rest that I put this front off of here. And then today, the groups you'll see from today, uh, you'll see all were me um, prone, laying prone on a shooting mat just down here where the camera is. Um, but you'll see that, that footage in there. Um, so I really, really like that 62 grain fusion and that kind of carried out over the rest of it. Uh, in fact, let me go ahead and just show you here. This up here is some of the 55 grain Fiocchi Full Metal Jacket, just their really bare bones um, Full Metal Jacket loads. Still shooting probably about an inch and a quarter right there. Uh, maybe maybe an inch and a half. Um, I'll have to maybe measure that when I get home. Um, definitely not bad for that type of ammo. Um, this, again, I believe was the 62 grain ammo. So if it had been just these four right here, it would have been definitely under an inch. That fifth one opened it up. And I did have a couple flyers, but honestly, I, I attribute that more to me than I do the barrel. Um, this, again, was hand loads. This, I believe, was the 55 grain again. And then this one, again, was that 62 grain fusion ammo. Believe it or not, there's five impacts right here. You may see only three holes, but there's actually five impacts here. So again, I was super, super stoked about that. And again, that's shooting off a bench with the bipod. And those were all with the regular muzzle brake. However, these ones from today are with this Griffin Optimus Micro. Um, and let me just go ahead first, uh, again, just did the hand loads just to see if I was gonna have a major point of impact shift with this ammo. That little guy, don't worry about that little guy. Um, I actually let, uh, there was a grandpa out here letting his, uh, shooting with his grandson. And um, his grandpa came over and asked about the suppressor. So I asked him if he wanted to shoot it, he said no. But uh, I asked if his grandson wanted to shoot it, he said yes. So I let his grandson shoot it. That's, that's what that is right there. Um, this is my hand loads again, but this is shooting prone with the silencer. And I just find in my own experience when I'm shooting prone, especially on that shooting mat, I'm able to just kind of lock everything, out, everything down a little bit better and get a little bit better groups as again, you'll, you'll see from this. So still not bad for, for my hand loads. There's uh, I believe just five shots right here, just over an inch for those. Um, this up here is the 55 grain Fiocchi. Again, uh, we're looking probably about, uh, this one's actually opened up a little bit more to almost two inches. I had a pretty decent three shot group right here and then these two opened it up a little bit. Um, I personally would attribute that to the, the silencer heating up and causing a little bit of an impact shift, but uh, you know, nonetheless, it is what it is. Then I switched to the 62 grain Fiocchi full metal jacket. So this is not, again, match grade ammo. This is just their regular, I guess, again, entry level for lack of a better word, ammo. And I got five shots right here. Again, definitely under an inch, so definitely sub MOA group right here. And then everything just, I got the stars aligned and I kept getting better and better groups. This was by far the best group I shot all day. Literally four shots in one ragged hole right there with one flyer off to the side. And if it hadn't been for that one flyer, we are definitely under a quarter inch. Um, but with that one flyer, we're probably at about three quarters of an inch. So easily sub MOA. And again, this is with 62 grain Fiocchi ammo. While I've had good experiences with it, um, again, it's not match grade stuff. So I re really wish that one flyer wasn't there because uh, that would have been a, it's already a smoking group. That would have made it even better. Uh, at this point, the barrel was heating up. I wanted to see how this thing was gonna shoot with a hot barrel with a hot silencer on the end. And again, all was 62 grain uh, full metal jacket, except for the center here. This was again, back to my hand loads just because I was curious after seeing all these others shoot so well. This five shot group, again, under an inch. This five shot group, again, under an inch. Uh, down here, these groups may look funky just because the um, because it's been wet out here. Um, the target is actually kind of delaminating from the backing, so that's why it looks funky. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, five shots, uh, easily under an inch, but three shots, basically one ragged hole right here with uh, little bookends, I guess. And then again, a five shot group, super tight trio, and then two opening it up, again, still under an inch. So that was 
How many back to back to back? One, two, three, four, five, six groups with that 62 grain Fiocchi Full Metal Jacket, back to back to back to back, all under an inch, five shot groups. Now you may notice there was a general trend point of impact shift between those because I did start to adjust the scope uh, to better uh, uh, compensate for the point of impact shift that I was getting with a silencer. But uh, I mean, getting again, six back to back with getting hotter and hotter barrel, um, I really could not ask for much more than that. Now, I will say I have tried the 77 grains here at Match Kings that Fiocchi loaded. This didn't really like it. I've tried the 70, I believe it was 75 grain Hornady, um, Hornady Custom Match Grade Ammo. Didn't really like that. It really seems to like those medium weight bullets. Because again, even the 55 grains, it was shooting okay, but again, not great. Um, so it really seems to like that like 62 to 69 grain region. If I really wanted to try some 69 grain um, Federal Gold Medal match, but I didn't have any available locally for me to just pick up. Um, so I, I didn't, but I really would, I'm curious about how this thing would treat those. Um, it is a one and eight twist, so it does make sense that it would like those medium weight bullets a little bit better. Um, and again, that is what I found. Now, those of you hand loaders out there, I know you can load a, uh, put together a load that will shoot better than any of these groups. I just wanted to test out some stuff that I know is going to be locally available for a lot of people so that they can get an idea of what they can just buy off the shelf for people, again, who don't hand load because I know you just buy stuff off the shelf. Um, now that said, each barrel is an individual. So while this one really liked those 62 grain bullets, whether it be the Fusion or the Full Metal Jacket, um, yours may like 55 grain or 75 grain or whatever else. So definitely test out your barrel to see what it likes. But again, this one just, man, it just ate that 62 grain stuff like it was nothing, especially once I was able to get down prone, get it on a nice little rest uh, off this bipod. Um, it just was shooting really well. And again, shooting really well with the silencer on the end, even though those things were getting really, really hot. Now with that, that is one of the things that I like about fluted barrels. I was recently talking to a person who was emailing me about a question he had for purchasing a barrel for an SBR project he was doing. He was asking me about flutes versus non-fluted. And um, basically what I told him, I'll go ahead and just tell you guys right now, is um, if I'm looking at two barrels that are identical, where the only difference is one is fluted and one is not, I'll probably go with the flutes. Um, however, for me, it is not necessarily going to be a determining factor in me purchasing a barrel. Um, there are other things that I prioritize more, the contour of the barrel, the material the barrel is made out of, what type of treatments it goes through. Um, to me, fluting is just kind of icing on top. So if I can get it, great, I will definitely take it. If not, it's not a deal breaker. What I like about it is, especially when you're shooting suppressed or you're shooting high volumes and you're getting that barrel really hot, you are increasing that surface area, which is going to help that heat dissipate a little bit faster, help everything cool down a little bit faster. The other nice thing you get with fluting is, I don't know how much, but you do get added rigidity because of these cuts. Um, I, I think there are people out there who argue that. I don't get why. The physics is pretty clear on how that type of stuff works. Um, it does add rigidity. So even with a really long barrel, you're still getting those really good consistent groups. Because I know there are people out there who really like those short, fast twist rate barrels because you have less whipping around. Um, but because of those flutes, you are getting a little bit added, uh, a little bit of added rigidity, which is going to um, translate to repeatability downrange. Again, how much so? I don't know. I can't tell you. Um, but again, the physics does back that up. There's a great, I believe it's number file video talking about how I think I think they call it the taco effect of how when you bend something one way, it increases rigi rigidity on that parallel line. Anyway bunch of math and science stuff that I'm, I'm sure 99% of you don't care about. So I guess to recap um, and kind of wrap up my thoughts about this thing, I was really disappointed with the uh, groups that I was getting prior to sending this barrel back. Again, by no means were they bad groups, but for the price that these things are, I, I expected a little bit better, and especially for the treatments that this thing goes through. Um, I expected better groups, so um, I did get in contact with them, and again, they were very helpful, and they did send me out a replacement barrel, and again, ever since then, it has been shooting phenomenally well, especially when I'm doing my part behind it. And I guess just FYI, the trigger in this thing right now is the uh, Rise Armament RS140. I have also been shooting it with the 434, but I was running into some issues with the trigger itself. 
talk about that when I do the review. Um, so the 140 from Rice Armament has been shooting great, and that's what I shot all those really good shoots with today, just to get that out there. Now, as far as, I guess, my thoughts towards Facts and Firearms having that issue with the barrel they sent me originally, um, you guys have seen it on my channel. Every company has their lemons. Uh, I, I seem to have a magnet to attract them, but you guys have seen things that have been otherwise well-reviewed from other people. I just have issues with them. Um, that's going to happen with whatever company you go through. I don't care how much the product costs, there's always the possibility of anything mechanical um, failing somewhere along the way. And again, I got a really early production one, so I don't think they'd had all the kinks worked out um, because I actually got one before they were officially released. Um, so, again, it, it is, can be, I guess, expected to run into some issues. But again, once those issues got ironed out, I have an amazing shooting barrel. Now, if you are interested in the Match Series barrels, but you don't want the 223 Wild like I have, I know they make them in 308, 65 Creedmoor, 65 Grendel, I believe, 300 Blackout, I want to say 762 by 39 for ARs. Um, uh, but again, you can go to their website and it'll list all the different options you have. They, they don't just do the 20 inch, they do all different lengths and in the different calibers as well. So if you are interested in something like that, definitely check it out. They're not cheap, um, but again, when you get it shooting well, as I have, um, I, I think it's definitely worth the price. And again, the, the treatments that these things go through, the materials they're using, um, the flutes and everything else, translate to that cost. They're not just charging you extra money to charge you extra money. You're getting stuff for that investment. And I guess when I talk about that, I should also mention that Facts and Firearms is a company that I feel really good about spending money on their products. So if you guys have seen really any video I've done with Facts and Firearms products in the last couple of years, you know my stance um, and my thoughts towards Bob Faxon, obviously the owner of Facts and Firearms. Um, he is just a really stand-up guy who, uh, and I guess all this stems back to, to provide some context. Um, the Haas USMC, uh, working on his uh, American Militia documentary, when I was with him at SHOT Show two years ago, um, he was going around interviewing different people, asking them um, basically what their interpretation of the Second Amendment was and what they thought the role of the militia was in the United States. And I'll link to that video that Bob Faxon did for his turn on that. And I literally could not have said it any better myself. So when you have the head of a company who gets it and is totally on board with the Second Amendment and our rights as Americans, I feel really good about not only supporting their company, buying their products, but also sending my viewers to go uh, buy their products. Because as we've seen, especially in the last few months, um, a lot of uh, owners of different companies are showing their true colors and are basically... I don't want to say turning their back on the Second Amendment, but making it very clear what their actual stances on the Second Amendment. And unfortunately, in a lot of cases, it's not really good what's coming out about their stances on the Second Amendment. Meanwhile, you have Bob Faxon, who is a very patriotic American who believes in the Second Amendment and our rights as citizens. So again, I feel really comfortable doing that, especially in the face of a lot of these other CEOs and owners and whatever else, figureheads. Um, basically making an ass of themselves and showing that they don't actually care about our rights as civilians in this country. But uh, I'll go ahead and get off my soapbox real quick. Um, I, I apologize, but I think that stuff like that is worth mentioning. And especially since it's raining, I'll go ahead and again wrap up my stuff here. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, definitely uh, let me know in the comments down below. I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. Um, I will say the best way to get in contact with me is either through Facebook or through Patreon. Um, so I do have a Patreon page, and the guys over there are super, super supportive of this channel. It's a really small group of us over there right now, but I do post all my content there early to thank those people, um, as well as posting exclusive content. So after this video, I'm going to just be doing an update video for, for my patrons, and I'm, we're also doing monthly live streams now. So if that if any of those things interest you, or just the idea of being able to financially support this channel um, it interests you, by all means, check out uh, my links in the description. To my patreon page and uh, do whatever you will with that information um, but anyway with all that said as always i hope you're able to get something out of this video and i really appreciate you watching
That's a really good group.